Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. It was one of those chilly nights in early November when the fog hangs low to the ground and everything seems to get eerily quiet. Corporal Mike Rollins, a Marine stationed at Camp Lejeune, was out in the field for a standard night training exercise. This particular area was part of a dense woodland section within the base, away from the main buildings and roads. His squad had been practicing land navigation for the better part of the day, maneuvering through thick underbrush and trees. And now that it was dark, they were taking turns on watch. The woods at Camp Lejeune were no joke. Thick pine forests stretched for miles, interspersed with swampy patches and small clearings. Anyone who had been through training there could tell you about the random sinkholes, the patches of wetland that you could suddenly stumble into, and the heavy, dense canopy that blocked out most of the moonlight. Rollins had been through these woods countless times, and he considered himself well acquainted with its quirks. But this night would challenge that confidence. It was around 0200 hours when it happened. Rollins was sitting against a tree, scanning the perimeter with his night vision goggles. The rest of the squad was scattered throughout the area, maintaining a low profile as part of the exercise. They were set up in a small clearing, surrounded on all sides by thick woods. The plan was to stay silent and observe, keeping watch for other units that might try to attack their position as part of the exercise. Rollins had just adjusted his gear when he noticed something strange on the edge of the clearing. At first, it seemed like just another shadow among the trees, but something about it made him look again. With the night vision, everything was tinged in shades of green, so it was hard to make out specific details, but this shadow was moving, and it was moving oddly. It wasn't a deer or any of the usual animals he might expect to see in the North Carolina woods. It moved too smoothly, almost gliding between the trees. Rollins frowned and tapped his radio, speaking in a low voice. Hey, we got movement at our nine o'clock. Anyone else see that? There was a crackle of static, followed by the voice of Private Thompson, who was positioned a few yards away. Negative, I don't see anything. You sure, man? Rollins kept his eyes trained on the spot where he had seen the movement. Yeah, I'm sure. Just keep an eye out. He waited, the seconds ticking by slowly. For a moment, he thought maybe his eyes were playing tricks on him. These woods were notorious for their weird echoes and strange shapes at night, and it wasn't uncommon to mistake a tree for a figure or a shadow for an animal. He took a deep breath, trying to shake off the tension. Then it moved again. This time, it came forward, out of the tree line and into the clearing. Rollins' breath caught in his throat. The shape was taller than any animal he'd seen in these woods, easily over seven feet, maybe more. It was walking upright, but there was something wrong about its gait. It moved in a jerky, almost mechanical way, as if it was struggling to walk like a human. Through the green-tinted vision of his goggles, he could make out its outline. It was thin, with limbs that seemed unnaturally long. Its head was narrow, almost conical, and it had an odd shimmer to it like it was wet or covered in some kind of slime. Rollins felt a chill run down his spine. This wasn't a person. It wasn't an animal either. It was something else, something that shouldn't be here. He glanced to his side, hoping to see some backup from the rest of his squad. But as he scanned the clearing, it struck him that they had all gone silent. His radio hadn't crackled in the last minute. He tapped it again. Thompson, Baker, do you guys see this? silence. He felt his pulse quicken. Rollins wasn't the kind of guy who spooked easily, but there was a creeping dread settling into his gut now. He knew he needed to do something. He couldn't just sit there and wait for this thing to come closer. The creature paused, still on the edge of the clearing, almost as if it were assessing the situation. Then it took a step forward and another. Each step was slow, deliberate. It wasn't in a hurry. Rollins finally decided to act. He raised his rifle, aiming it at the thing's center mass. Stop right there, he barked, his voice steadier than he felt. This is a restricted area. Turn around and leave now. The figure stopped. For a second, Rollins thought it had listened. But then it tilted its head, like a curious animal. And that's when he saw it. Two points of light where its eyes should be. 
not like eyes reflecting light, but actual faintly glowing orbs. They blinked, or at least he thought they did, and a low, hissing noise filled the air. Rollins, what the hell is that? A voice finally crackled over the radio. It was Thompson. His voice edged with fear. I don't know, Rollins replied, keeping his eyes on the creature. But we're not sticking around to find out. Everyone fall back. Now. As he gave the order, the creature let out a strange, clicking sound. It wasn't loud, but it cut through the quiet of the woods like a knife. Then, without warning, it surged forward. Rollins didn't hesitate. He fired the sharp crack of his rifle shattering the stillness. The thing recoiled, but not in the way a person would when hit. It twisted, almost folding in on itself, and then darted sideways into the trees. Rollins fired again, aiming for where it had disappeared, but there was no sign of movement, just the rustle of leaves and the distant call of night birds. Fall back, he yelled into the radio, already scrambling to his feet. He wasn't waiting to see if it would come back. The squad moved, crashing through the underbrush, their training forgotten in the face of whatever it was they had just encountered. They didn't stop until they reached the edge of the woods, where the base lights cast their reassuring glow. Panting, Rollins turned back, scanning the tree line. Nothing. It was as if the thing had never been there. Did you hit it? Thompson asked, his face pale. I don't know, Rollins replied, still catching his breath. I fired, but... I don't know. They reported the incident, of course. The higher-ups dismissed it as stress, maybe a wild animal encounter. But Rollins and his squad knew what they saw. For weeks after, they heard rumors around the base, stories of strange sightings in the woods, whispers of something that shouldn't be out there. Rollins never went back into those woods at night. Whatever was out there, he was sure of one thing. It was real, and it didn't belong in this world. Private James Carter had been stationed at Fort Bragg for almost a year, but he still wasn't used to the thick woods of North Carolina. Being from the Midwest, he was familiar with forests, but there was something different about the Cape Fear River Basin. The air felt heavier, the shadows darker. Locals around the base had told stories about strange happenings in those woods, and Carter couldn't get them out of his head. It was late fall and Carter's squad had been sent on a three-day training exercise deep in the forest. They were testing new equipment, a communications relay that would allow them to set up temporary outposts in dense, remote terrain. Their mission was straightforward, find a suitable location near the river, set up camp, and test the relay's signal strength. But they had gotten a late start, and now found themselves racing against the setting sun. By the time they reached a small clearing near the riverbank, dusk had settled in. The squad set to work setting up camp. Carter glanced around the clearing. The river was visible through a break in the trees, its dark surface reflecting the dim light. Everything seemed still, too still. No birds chirping, no crickets. Just the rustle of leaves in the wind. He pushed the feeling aside and focused on his task. Hey, Carter, said Specialist Green one of his squad mates. Think this spot will work? Carter nodded. Yeah, it's open enough. Let's just get this relay set up before we lose all light. They worked quickly, setting up tents and positioning the relay on a small, flat patch of ground. Once everything was in place, Carter and Green went to check the river. They needed to find a good spot to refill their canteens, and the bank seemed like the logical place. As they walked closer to the water, Carter noticed something odd. The river seemed almost unnaturally calm, like glass. No ripples, no current. That's weird, he muttered. What? Green asked, squatting down to uncap his canteen. Carter gestured at the water. It's too still. Shouldn't it be moving faster this close to the bank? Green shrugged. Maybe it's deeper than it looks. Maybe. Carter trailed off, still feeling uneasy. He squatted down beside Green, dipping his canteen into the water. It was cold, colder than he expected. As he filled his canteen, something caught his eye, a small swirl in the water, like a miniature whirlpool. It spun in place, slowly expanding. 
Uh, Green, you see that? Carter pointed at the swirl, his voice low. Green glanced over, frowning. Yeah, that's not right. The swirl grew, widening into a circle about a foot across. Then, without warning, the center of it darkened, like ink spreading through the water. Carter and Green stared, transfixed. The dark spot seemed to pulse, growing darker until it became almost black. Carter, I think we should back up, Green said, his voice tense. Carter nodded, but before they could move, the dark spot surged upward. It wasn't water anymore. It was solid, or at least it seemed that way. A mass rose from the river, dripping and glistening in the fading light. It was long and sleek, like a serpent, but not entirely. Its surface was slick, covered in something that reflected the dull glow of the evening sky. The thing kept rising until it stood about seven feet tall. As Carter stared, he realized it was looking at them, though it had no face, no eyes. Its top was a rounded, bulbous shape that swayed gently from side to side. The rest of its body trailed back into the water, undulating slowly. Back away, slowly, Carter whispered, his throat dry. They took a step back, but as soon as they did, the thing moved. It swayed forward, its entire body bending and stretching toward them. Carter felt a chill run down his spine. It wasn't aggressive, not yet, but it was definitely aware of them. Green swallowed hard. What, what is that? I don't know, Carter said, struggling to keep his voice steady. Just keep moving back. The creature stopped, seeming to hover in place. Then, it did something that made Carter's blood run cold. From its rounded top, a tendril-like appendage extended outward. It twisted and curled in the air before pointing directly at them. For a moment, it just stayed there, eerily still. And then, it began to vibrate, emitting a low hum. The sound hit them like a wave, deep and resonant, vibrating in their bones. Carter felt an intense pressure in his head, like the air around them had thickened. He glanced at Green, who looked as pale as a ghost. We need to move, now, Carter hissed. They turned and ran, crashing through the underbrush back toward camp. Carter's mind raced. What the hell had they just seen? His heart pounded as he tore through the foliage, his only focus on getting back to the squad. They burst into the clearing, panting and wide-eyed. The others looked up in alarm. What's going on? Corporal Diaz asked, dropping the equipment he was holding. Something's in the river, Carter gasped, pointing back toward the bank. We need to pack up and go. The squad didn't waste time asking questions. They could see the fear in Carter and Green's faces. Quickly, they began disassembling the relay, stuffing gear into packs. As they worked, Carter kept glancing toward the river. It was still quiet, but he could feel a change in the air, a tension that prickled along his skin. And then, the hum returned, faint at first, barely audible, but growing louder. Carter froze, his eyes locked on the tree line near the riverbank. The hum intensified, a deep, vibrating sound that made the ground tremble. Move! Move! Carter shouted. They grabbed what they could and started retreating through the forest. The hum followed them, echoing through the trees. Carter glanced back once and saw a glistening shape slithering through the underbrush. It wasn't rushing toward them, but it was following, keeping pace with their frantic retreat. Branches whipped at his face, roots snagged at his boots, but he kept running, heart pounding in his ears. The hum grew louder, more insistent, as if the thing was calling out to them, trying to pull them back, but they didn't stop. They ran until they broke out of the forest onto a dirt road, gasping for breath. Carter turned, expecting to see the creature burst from the trees, but it didn't. The forest edge remained still, the hum fading into an eerie silence. What was that? Diaz panted, staring wide-eyed at the darkened woods. Carter shook his head, swallowing hard. I don't know, but it's still out there. They called in for extraction and returned to base, shaken and confused. The officers took their report, listening with skepticism but unable to explain the experience. Carter spent the following days trying to make sense of it, replaying the encounter in his mind. Whatever that thing was, it wasn't a natural part of the river. It was something older, 
something that didn't belong in their world. He talked to a few locals, hoping to find some answers. Most of them refused to say much, just muttering about the river being haunted or alive. But one elderly man, a lifelong fisherman, gave Carter a knowing look and said, You saw it, didn't you? The river spirit. Some things are best left alone. Carter didn't know if he believed in spirits, but he knew what he'd seen was real, and he knew that the Cape Fear River held secrets, secrets that were better left undisturbed. All he could do was avoid that stretch of woods and warn others to do the same. I'm writing in to tell you about something that happened to me during my combat training at Fort Benning, Georgia. It was in the middle of August, August of 2003 to be exact. I was taking a nightland navigation course, which is a course where you go out at night and have to plot points on a military map with minimal light using only a compass and protractor. The purpose is to get us used to being out at night and navigating at night. So there I was in the middle of the course at about oh, 100, and I was trudging through some deep brush. There was a row of trees on either side of the brush, and I was walking right down the middle of them. As I was walking, I started to hear something to my left. It sounded like it was walking too, but through the trees and it was making a low sound, like a growling sound that sort of rumbled the earth. I thought it was kind of strange, but I just kept walking thinking that it might have been some kind of tactic meant to try and disrupt our concentration, to test us basically. So I just continued on with my tasks, but then I heard it again and again, and it was closer and closer each time. By my calculations, it was about 40 yards away. So at that point, I decided to investigate it. I mean, like I said, maybe this was a test to see how we handle these things. So I made my way through the brush and towards the trees. I walked towards the noise, and soon enough, I was able to make out a large figure lurking in the trees. It had its back turned to me, but I was close enough now that I could see its muscles moving as it stood there doing something. I assumed it was a drill sergeant or something, but then I quickly noticed that it wasn't wearing any uniform and it was hairy as hell, sort of like a bear would look. But this is Fort Benning and we don't have bears or anything like that. So I thought to myself, what the hell could this be? And that's when the thing turned around and my God, this thing had extremely bright yellow eyes. They were so bright that they almost glowed in the dark. I mean, man, these things were bright, and its face looked like a dog's face with long fangs sticking out of its mouth. It stood about six and a half feet and had really broad shoulders. It also had very long arms. Its hands looked kind of like a human's hands, except for the fact that they had really long claws coming out of them. The only other detail that I can remember is that it had a reddish brown color to its skin. I stood there in utter amazement, and when I did this, Thing let out a growl that sounded like the devil himself. It was so loud and deep that it shook my very soul. This thing then started to run towards me. Now, at this time, I should have been running as fast as I could to get away from this thing. But for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason I just stood there and watched it come towards me. When it got about 10 feet away from me, it stopped dead in its tracks. It looked at me with those bright eyes, and then all of a sudden, it disappeared right before my eyes. It literally vanished into thin air, and when it did, all of the sounds around me went silent. There were no crickets, no birds, no nothing. It was like everything just shut off once this thing disappeared. I stood there for a few seconds in utter amazement. And that's when I decided to get the hell out of there. So I booked it back and began to tell the others what had happened. They didn't believe me at first, but then they saw how shaken up I was and that I was telling the truth. So they took me back out there with some flashlights and some weaponry, just in case we ran into this thing again. When we got there, I could still feel its presence around me, but no matter where we looked, we couldn't find anything at all. We stayed out there for about an hour looking around but nothing turned up. I don't know what this thing was, but it wasn't human at all. That is the one thing that I can say for certain. So after looking around, we headed back to the camp. As we were walking back, I noticed that there was a tree right next to me, 
and on it were these long scratches that went up the tree. They looked like they were made by really long claws, and I noticed that there was some sort of yellowish-reddish substance on them. I couldn't figure out what they were, but I did notice that there was a very foul smell around. I don't know what it was, but it was definitely some kind of marking. I didn't tell anyone about the scratches, because I didn't want to look like a lunatic. So, after that happened, we all went back to the camp and stayed up for the rest of the night, just in case this thing came back around. We always kept our flashlights on and had our weapons out just in case we needed them. But nothing else happened that night or any other night during that course. The only reason why I'm telling you this is because there are people out there who say that these types of things do not exist. And I want you to know that they absolutely 100% do. 